Hello people, in this video we want to look at cochlear implants. So basically what are we looking at guys? Hearing aids, right? Hearing aid, uh, basically rehabilitation of hearing impaired. In that we have finished hearing aids, correct? Hearing aid we have finished. Now we are going to something different, some other uh, technology, implant. It's actually not called as a hearing aid, right? Did you get it guys? So in this we are looking at, there are two types of implants. Cochlear implants and auditory brain stem implant. We are looking at cochlear implant. What is this that you see here? Yeah, it is the conventional hearing aid. So we have finished this, bone anchored, implantable, everything we finished. People are not at all happy. They want something special. We are giving them a cochlear implant. Let's look at this. Look at the cochlear implant. Where is it? In the inner ear, directly you are implanting something in this cochlea. So in the cochlea, in the spiral thing, you are putting something you can see, right? You can see something is coming like this and going here and in the spiral. So this is a cochlear implant. Look at the principle of cochlear implant here. One something here, two something. 3 and 4. Let us try to understand what they are saying here guys. 1. External speech processor. So as usual there is a speech processor outside which will have a microphone, standard things, right? And it will transmit. Here inside you have a receiver. Inside you will have a receiver as usual standard. That's also very standard. Now you have 2 here. What is 2? Processor sends digital signals to internal implant. So to this cochlear implant, who is sending the signals? 2. That is the, uh, this is the uh, in signals are coming to the implant. Okay, then 3. What is 3? Internal implant turns signals into electrical energy. So, this now it is converting into electrical energy. Here you are converting everything to electrical energy and you are sending it to an array inside the cochlea. This word is very important guys. Array. Right? What is there inside your cochlea? Array. Electrode array. Focus guys. The last thing here is these electrodes will stimulate hearing nerve. That is a cochlear nerve. So, these electrodes are going to stimulate your cochlear nerve and uh, whatever the, the hair cells are damaged here. So, hair cells in your cochlea could be damaged. So, whatever is damaged, don't uh, worry. The signal will anyways be sent directly to the nerve by these electrodes. So, if your sensory part of your uh, inner ear is gone case, right? That is your hair cells are not proper. You can as well put a cochlear implant and that will directly transmit the information to the nerve. Right? So, this is a cochlear implant. So, who are these people who are taking cochlear implants? They cannot benefit from normal hearing aid. They have profound sensory neural hearing loss. They are saying sensory hearing loss we can understand. So, um, there is uh, what will you do? You will uh, stimulate the auditory nerve. The auditory nerve you will only stimulate. Who will stimulate? The cochlear implant will stimulate. Uh, there is degeneration of hair cells in the cochlea. So, you can understand. So, who, uh, you, hair cells are not there to stimulate your nerve. So, here who will stimulate the cochlear implant? So, guys, introduction to cochlear implant is over. Okay. So, now let's move on. So, various cochlear implants. Let us look at these now. Medel cochlear implant. Medel C401. Sonata model. Ear level speech processor. Okay. Then, what is this one? Nucleus cochlear implant. Cochlear cooperation with ear level speech processor. So, they should have a behind the ear or something this looks like, right? A speech processor. The speech processors and all, they will be outside. External part these are. Internal, you will have the receiver and all that. Advanced Bionics Cochlear Implant System. Again, this seems to be the external part, right? This seems to be the inner, internal one. I think this is going to go spiral, the electrode array. What do you feel, guys? Again, here, this seems to be external and this seems to be the internal part. You can see the spiral here. Guys, are you able to focus? But what are these two wires? What are these two things? Two wires, why are they? We need to understand that. Here, this one. This is again the external part looks like. And this is the internal part looks like. This will become electrode array. Spiral, it should become, right? Guys, look at this from another textbook. External parts behind the ear, platinum body bone. So, this one is behind the ear, right? You can easily know by the shape. This is behind the ear. And then this is some body wound. They will wear it on the body, it seems. The wire is slightly longer, looks like. Look at the parts of it also they have described. Let's see. The ear one, behind the ear one. There's a battery here. Okay, you can put a rechargeable battery. Then uh, you have some cover. Here you have a volume control. LED status light. Built-in microphone. Obviously, it should have a microphone. Then an auxiliary ear hook is there. Processor, which is electronic, built-in telecoil something. 
guys focused headpiece and cape okay with some color cover some colored cover they are giving for the headpiece this down one here what you are seeing is the body worn guys body worn also will have similar things only volume control program switch sensitivity control built in led battery should be the rechargeable etc okay headpiece is there this is the external one let's look at the internal parts here so internal parts they are showing here so what are they in, in there in the internal parts you'll have a receiver obviously you can see here the receiver is here here is the sound processor the microphone everything inside receiver they are showing here this is the receiver you will have then um, some conducting kind of thing which will have to send the information to the cochlear implant okay so here you have the electrode 16 contact sites will be there so that's what they are showing here see dot 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 some 16 contact sites they have shown here let us see the uh, cochlear implant in place guys we'll uh, shall we look at the cochlear in place in the ear look at this so here they are showing you the headpiece implant electrode and here you have the cochlea okay inside the cochlea how it is they are showing here blow up view electrode array inside the cochlea that should be so difficult right how will they actually coil this what do you think guys interesting one more photo here let's look off at this one also this is the medel cochlear implant internal part they have shown here this is sonata and this is pulsar and this is the external part same thing okay sorry one more is there photo let's look at this nucleus 5 cochlear implant this you remember right it has two things here you have the coil they are showing so what are they showing here there's a remote there's a remote control by which they can control this looks like and what is this this is the external okay behind the ear they will plug it like that yeah, behind the ear and then here you have the implant in position here you have the implant in position and here you have the internal part the receiver etc same thing but this is nucleus <coughs> there will be a remote also remember okay too many images guys yes now let's look at some theory a cochlear implant consists of a microphone speech processor electrode array see i would put the speech processor first because first is the speech processor oh yeah 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 first is the microphone you have to hear the voice now then you process the speech and then electrode array correct indications to whom will you give this <clears throat> to people who have bilateral sensory hearing loss this is so much correct just sensory hearing loss nerve is fine that's why you can give the information from the um, cochlea to the nerve right so it is sensory hearing loss who are not benefited by hearing aids again they are not ben benefited by hearing aid <clears throat> and they are saying it is a bilateral severe sensory hearing loss okay so it can be used in case of bilateral severe to profound hearing loss which is caused by meningitis osteosclerosis ototoxic drugs and mumps so the uh, basically the hair cells are damaged that's what you should understand right the hair cells are damaged can happen when ototoxic drugs mumps meningitis osteosclerosis okay to whom you won't give a cochlear implant guys it is contraindicated if there is retrocochlear hearing loss yeah behind the cochlea if there is hearing loss then how will you a uh, fix it right how a cochlear implant can fix something that is behind the cochlea that be some kind of a nerve issue right so in retro cochlear hearing loss you cannot give this it's a contraindication good let's move on next slide so what and all components will be the external component speech processor internal component you will have receiver etc electrode array all this you will write right do we have to tell you again and again Yes, here one important word in cochlear import uh, uh, cochlear uh, implant is electrode array. Don't forget this, okay? Electrode array. This is the most important point here. Otherwise, everything is almost the same, right? Externally, you will have speech processor. Everything is same. So, how will you pick up the sound? Is picked up by the microphone, which is in the sound processor, right? Uh, there are some strategies by which they do sound processing. So, sound processor will help analyze the codes. This is what is very important, right? speech processor analyzes and codes sound into electrical pulses so it will convert the sound into electrical pulses so how will they do this examples of such strategies what strategies the processor uses variety of coding strategies to deliver meaningful speech parameters so there's some simultaneous analog strategy continuous interleaved sampling spectral peak speak at least one if you want to remember you can go for this spectral peak speak advanced combination encounter ace combination encounter speak some speak is there 
it will convert this uh, sound into electrical signal okay that is the strategy one you remember spectral peak speak okay speak is nothing but spectral peak okay then now what happened you have received the information converted the sound into electrical energy now what will happen the electrical impulses have to go from the trans uh, pro, uh, from the processor to the transmitting coil so the sound processor has converted into electrical impulse it has to be transmitted so you had a microphone which picked up the speech then you have a speech processor now it has converted it into electrical signal now there's a transmitter it will send the signal inside the uh, the uh, your skin there you have the receiver the receiver or simula uh, stimulator okay via radio frequency okay it sends the signal to the implant via radio frequency radio frequency electrical signal okay guys is it so sleepy no okay shall we continue okay now this receiver is there inside now what will it do it will decode the signal and it transmit to the electrode array that's all this receiver will transmit the signal to the electrode array now this electrode array what it will do it will de deliver multiple channels very important earlier they had single channel but now they have multiple channels okay this is another important word that you will have to write in the exam multiple channels okay so it will uh, there some 16 you saw no like that so different it has some markings like this you saw remember so at different points on the basilar membrane it will deliver the uh, information deliver multiple channels of current to different places along the basilar membrane this is very interesting right so you know the cochlea if you uncoil you will have something like this a basilar membrane remember this basilar membrane will have some high frequency to low frequency you remember this is the theory of hearing you have done this so this cochlear implant is like this it will have multiple channels looks like where it will deliver this Chan multiple channels of current deliver multiple channels of current to different places along the basilar membrane see this is what they are showing in the uncoiled cochlea how the basilar membrane is right here you have low frequency it is more broad here here is slightly narrow so here you have the high frequency here remember this this is the tonotopical mapping on the bas basilar membrane this is the helicotrema right where the uh, scala tympani scala vestibuli all are uh, talking to each other right so this is the von Bekesi traveling wave theory. Remember or forgot, guys, all this? So remember, in cochlear implant, the information is being sent directly to your inner ear. Very important. Okay. Now, how will we choose the candidate? That's what we want to look at. You can give it to children and adults. They should have what sensory uh, hearing loss. Remember, right? They can have sensory hearing loss even if it is bilateral. It's fine, but their nerves should be fine, isn't it? and uh, they should ha not have benefited from regular uh, conventional hearing aids they have not got much benefit okay they should have good family social support realistic ex expectation should be there they should not be having any contraindication for surgery they should have adequate cognitive function that means they whatever information now they will get via the hearing device they should be able to understand it so basically here one important factor will come that whether it is going to be a um, this one prelingual or a postlingual so if the person Prelingual means he has not learned speech yet and he already has deafness. So, in this case, it is uh, if you do early uh, surgery, okay, he will develop uh, the speech because of the hearing that he will get now. But if it is postlingual, then uh, postlingual means no issue. That means he already has speech. So, if you give him a cochlear implant, he will be able to understand. Did you understand, guys? See, your speech will develop only if you are able to hear properly. Correct? So this prelingual, postlingual is very important. If a person uh, is, that's why what they are saying is early for a person who is a child, etc. If they are developing speech, early uh, treatment with these cochlear implants or hearing aids will help. Okay, otherwise there will be auditory deprivation because of the degeneration of the central auditory pathways. You understand, right? The auditory pathway, how it goes. You remember this from the uh, inner ear, it will go to the cochlear nerve, cochlear nuclei. Then it's going to the medulla, superior olivary nucleus, then lateral lemniscus. Then from here it is going where? Inferior colliculus, medial geniculate nucleus. From there it is going to the primary auditory cortex 41-42. So all this should have developed, right? So if you wanted to develop, you should give early hearing aid. Or if this person already has speech development, then no issue. You can give the cochlear implant. You understood basically what we are trying to see, right? Okay, some factors that predict successful outcome. 
previous auditory experience that means they should have heard before that means it's a postlingual patient right then they will be able to benefit younger age at implantation so if a prelingual child they have not developed speech kind of thing yes then that means at younger age if you are implanting good there should be the duration of deafness should be less neural plasticity should be there that means they should have an ability to uh, develop their nervous system their auditory pathway and all they should be having the ability to uh, develop that nervous system then only giving this hearing aid will help this kind of reminds me of amblyopia in uh, ophthalmology what do you think guys yeah then multi channel implants nowadays they are using multi channel implants um, it is much better than single channel devices okay so uh, they will develop ability to recognize speech early implantation is very important same thing they are telling again and again next how will you evaluate the patient you have to evaluate whether this person first of all is a good candidate from all these parameters that we told you then you will also check if this person can handle general anesthesia because you have to do surgery they should be fully vaccinated against meningitis uh, right so meningitis can be caused by haemophilus influenzae type b uh, bacteria pneumococcus meningococcus so they should be having all these vaccinations how will you get a pneumococcus um, vaccination separate you will get then how will you get haemophilus influenzae type b uh, it is already there in pentavalent vaccine so you would have more probably uh, taken it so you will have to do ct mri right so you will have to do imaging of the temporal bone cochlea auditory nerve brain so you have to do ct and mri right you should identify pathologies if they are there which can complicate your implantation process you will evaluate this person's speech how will you do evaluation same pure tone audiometry speech discrimination test tympanometry auto acoustic emissions auditory brain response so uh, auditory uh, steady state response guys you remember all the hearing tests how you will do right same thing you do all that okay so you basically decide who is good for your surgery then hearing aid trial and evaluation is mandatory okay you will have to do hearing aid trial what are you understanding here okay then speech and language evaluation you should understand whether this person is prelingual or postlingual psychological evaluation also you do guys so that you know whether these people uh, cognitive status uh, what it is can they understand the information that they will get after the implant kind of a thing same thing they are telling again and again twisting and turning prelingual postlingual thing okay surgery now let's come to the surgery for this guys you just notice here that they are inserting this electrode array where into the scala tympani okay <clears throat> so here's your cochlea. Cochlea has three parts, right? Scala vestibuli, scala media, and scala tympani. So they're placing it here, here, okay, in the scala tympani. Why? Why if they ask you? Because it is close to the, it is in close proximity to the spiral ganglion cells and their dendrites, which are actually in the modiolus and osseous spiral lamina of the cochlea, respectively. So. So here you have the modiolus, right? So where is the scala tympani? This will be the scala tympani. So they are saying this one is more close to the ganglion and some dendrites. Ganglion is there in modiolus, right? Ganglion is there in modiolus, and dendrites are there in the osseous spiral lamina of the cochlea. Okay. So uh, if you know more about that, you can tell us. Moving on, this surgery you will do under general anesthesia. There are two flaps. They are saying. Two layer approach, one flap on skin and subcutaneous tissue, and the second on the mucoperiosteal flap, and they are doing something there. Not going into the detail. See, to put that, to put this cochlear implant, there are two techniques, guys. Some facial recess approach is there to put the cochlear implant, and then some pericanal technique is also there, guys. So, not sure if we have to know this much of detail. Guys, this looks a little too complex, but anyways, in the facial recess approach, what did you see? Posterior tympanotomy. Cochleotomy, something they are doing here. They have some pericanal technique where they are making a bony tunnel. Okay, they are raising a tympanometal flap to perform the cochleostomy. Here also they are doing the cochleotomy. Bony tunnel they are drilling. Here two examples are there for this technique: varia and supramietal recess approach. Okay, just read this more if you want. Just learn those two names, guys. Tell the names. The facial recess approach. The peri techniques barrier and supermeating recess approach yeah say that again the facial recess approach the pericarnal techniques barrier and supermeating recess approach yeah that's it just learn those names okay post what they will do focus guys they will activate this implant only some one month after implantation okay and then they will do some rehabilitation etc 
ऑडियर ऑडिटरी वर्बल थेरेपी द एम्फोसिस इज लेड ऑन मेकिंग द चाइल्ड लिसन एंड स्पीक लाइक अ नॉर्मल पर्सन दैन यूजिंग लिप रीडिंग एंड विशल क्यूज ओके दैट्स इट गाइस लेट्स लुक एट द लास्ट स्लाइड हियर कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ कॉक्लियर इम्प्लांट सर्जरी यू हैव अर्ली कॉम्प्लिकेशन एंड लेट कॉम्प्लिकेशन लेट इज लुक एट द अर्ली कॉम्प्लिकेशन फेशियल पैरालिसिस वूड इन्फेक्शन इन्फेक्शन स्टैंडर्ड थिंग यू विल राइट wound dehiscence flap necrosis there are some two flaps so there can be necrosis electrode migration where is it going electrode migration device failure device itself failed there is uh, cerebrospinal fluid leak oops meningitis that's why they gave the vaccination i think against meningitis etc post operative dizziness vertigo yeah obviously you're going into the inner ear vertigo possible coming to late complications guys uh, there can be exposure of device and extrusion pain can be there at the site of implant migration can happen of the device device can failure in the later stage otitis media middle ear infection can happen same thing infection they have mentioned here is a wound infection here is a middle ear infection your device failure here is late device failure okay what else is all fine okay let's take a recap guys what did we want to look at in this video cochlear implant so we are here in the implants we have cochlear implant and auditory brain stem implants all these are coming under instrumental devices in that uh, we are looking at the cochlear implant what is cochlear implant it's an electronic device especially what it will do it will um, wherever there is a person who has hair cell degeneration that means they have sensory hearing loss they can and they cannot benefit from hearing aids to them you will give uh, this a cochlear implant which will stimulate the auditory nerve okay so what and all will be there in this you will have a sound processor outside a microphone sound processor and a transmitter outside right and inside you will have a receiver then this will conduct and here you have the actually implant that is the inside the scala tympani of the cochlea that is a electrode array multiple channel will be there okay multiple channel currently they are using multiple channel that's what you saw now so these are various cochlear implants so external part internal part they are showing here anyways so again so many we saw now basically uh, who are the uh, people to whom you will give this to people who have severe sensory hearing loss bilateral they are not benefited by hearing aid contraindications don't give it if there is retrocochlear hearing aid obviously why will you give it to a person who has the hearing uh, loss behind the cochlea this is a cochlear implant right then so ex uh, you saw external component what will be the internal component what will be there you saw so basically how does this work there is microphone it will pick up the sound sound processor will process it and convert it into electrical pulses uh, so here you are using some uh, strategies one of them is speak that is spectral peak is a strategy to convert the sound energy into electrical energy then what will happen inside the receiver will take the information and give it to the cochlear implant this cochlear implant will have multiple channels right so on the basilar membrane at multiple points it will give the information okay so did you understand that so where are you putting this uh, electrode array in the scala tympani remember in the scala tympani okay why are you putting it in scala tympani because it is close to the spiral ganglion which is there in the modulus and the <clears throat> dendrites etc we'll come to that candidacy uh, profile you will choose children or adults they should have sensory hearing loss they should have no benefit from hearing aids or little benefit they should have adequate cognitive function this is something that is something very importantly they are telling right uh, a prelingual or postlingual you should decide if it is prelingual you should give early treatment postlingual you can give because the, they would have already developed speech right so factors that will uh, say whether this cochlear implantation will be successful or not you should have younger age at implantation for a prelingual child for a postlingual you should have they should have had previous auditory exposure and they should have tried to use other hearing aids before there should be a shorter duration of deafness and neural plasticity the nerve should be able to adapt mainly multi channel implants they are using now same thing and uh, you how will you check whether the patient is uh, good enough candidate for cochlear implant you will check all this uh, hearing stuff you will check pruton audiometry speech discrimination everything you will do you will check if they will be able to handle anesthesia they should be fully vaccinated against meningitis etc you will ask them to take a ct scan or an mri right so you can know the imaging of the bone temporal bone cochlea auditory nerve etc you can identify pathologies so that you can uh, decide whether you want to do the surgery or not hearing aid evaluation you will do speech and language evaluation very important only in cochlear implant they are talking a lot about this speech and language evaluation psychological evaluation you have to do so how will you do the surgery 
<clears throat> there are two approaches anyways uh, finally what are you going to do you're putting the electrode array in the scala tympani because it is close to the spiral ganglion cells which are there in the modulus and their dendrites which are there in the osseous spiral lamina of the cochlea you will also <clears throat> give general anesthesia <clears throat> guys they during during they are doing the surgery in general anesthesia okay and they will raise two flaps looks like first flap on the skin and subcutaneous tissue and the second on the muco periosteal flap they didn't say two flap but they saying two layered approach okay yeah it is a second flap okay techniques are two which are the two techniques you already know the names facial recess approach and peri canal technique will you forget the names close your eyes and say it once guys for cochlear implant two approaches are there they are the facial recess approach the peri canal techniques varia and supramedial recess approach very good very what is it varia and supramedial recess approach if you can remember these names great and the technique also then after 2 uh, 3 to 4 weeks they will activate the implant okay like after a month you can say then you have to give them some uh, rehabilitation very important rehabilitation auditory verbal therapy okay this child should not depend on lip sync and all they should hear they should hear and understand so the child should listen and speak wait we'll put a beto yeah the child should listen and speak remember okay then complications we saw there can uh, the person can land up with meningitis csf leak uh, facial paralysis infection at the wound site flap necrosis the electrode itself can migrate device can fail wound dehiscence they said post operative dizziness vertigo late complications you saw the device can fail again there can be pain at the implant there can be migration of this electrode device exposure of the device otitis media infection that's it guys in this video we finished cochlear implant bye bye